name is Kelsey Balanceifer, and I'm the event coordinator and publication editor at the Astoria Warrington Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thank you for joining us for Business After Hours. We're so excited to have you here tonight and excited to hear from our featured speaker in just a little bit. So I wanted to start out um, with a couple of quick reminders about Remo if you haven't been familiar with using this system. Um, you do have a profile on Remo that you can fill out with your picture and your name and your business and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a little round icon on the upper right hand corner of your browser. You can click on that and then click my profile and fill in your information. The great news is that information saves. So every uh, Remo to join us for our future networking events, uh, that information will already be preloaded. Uh, so you only have to fill it out once. So just log in with the same email address uh, every month and uh, that information will already be there. Uh, so to use the chat feature during our presentation today, um, there should be a button on the bottom of your screen uh, that says chat. And um, it might already be open as a little sidebar in, along the side of your screen. Um, if you see that and then click on general chat, that's where everybody can chime in and see what everybody else is saying. Um, so if you haven't already, feel free to drop a line in there about your name and your business that you're with. And that's also where you can leave questions uh, for our featured speaker tonight. If you have questions during her presentation, we'll be monitoring that and be able to uh, get those questions answered. During networking, which we will go back to again after we finish the presentation, uh, you can change tables, bounce around at different tables. Just double click on the table that you want to move to, to bump over there. And uh, networking works best if you're not the only person at your table. So uh, feel free to move to a different table if you see that you're by yourself. Uh, keep your microphone muted when you're not the one talking at your table. It helps keep, de keep that noise feedback loop down. Um, and the buttons to control your camera and microphone are along the bottom of your screen, cam on and mic on. And during the presentation, like I said, feel free to drop questions in the general chat and uh, we'll get those answered. And if you're interested in hosting a business after hours or chamber networking breakfast, uh, let us know and we'll get you on the schedule. We've got a couple openings uh, later this year. So I'm gonna uh, have David Reed, our executive director, join me on the screen. Uh, he just wants to say hi and welcome you all. And thank you for coming, David. He's there. There he is. Eric, um, how to do it? Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're all here. It's uh, it's 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 nice to see some of you, and I will be seeing all of you before this is all over. Um, this is a this is a special treat for us tonight because uh, Jerry and I got a chance to sit down with Candy um, a week or so ago and and talk to her about what she's working on and the answer is a lot of things she is uh she is very uh jumped in with both feet since since arriving in astoria so i'll let her tell you the story of of, of exactly what she's doing but um, i think you will find her engaging smart um and very community minded which uh which always impresses me and i i appreciate that very much so um looking forward to to hearing more about what what candy is up to um, i encourage you to ask questions um in the chat window while she's speaking if you get those questions out there i'll be able to sort of field those and and get them to candy she'll probably be able to see them too but um we also um she's going to be available at the tables afterwards as well. So feel free to seek her out. And again, remember to, to jump around tables, go go see some folks. Um, we don't have a lot of people on so far right now. So if there are folks that you know were going to join us, um, send them a text right now, see if they can get get out here. Um, the the uh, uh, the more the merrier in, in these networking things. Uh, we're also going to be giving away $500 tonight in the um, in the, the cash pot prize. So um, be a shame for them to miss that. So they still have time to, to join us for that. Um, it is probably uh, not why you came here was to listen to me yammer on and talk. So I want to jump drop it over to Jerry, our um, membership coordinator, who's going to talk about the the new members that have joined us this last month. And while he while he comes on here, um, I want to let you know that this is um, this has been a really weird year. Uh, and one of the wonderful surprises has been the number of people who have joined us at the chamber in this time. Um, 
in large part because of Jerry's efforts in getting getting the word out there. But I think people are starting to understand that um, the best way to handle something um, like all the things that we're handling this year is together and as a, and as a team. So um, so Jerry, I'll let you tell you tell tell folks about the the new members since the last time we got together. Well, thank you, Dave. Uh, hello, everybody. How's everything going? Um, yeah, we were excited about uh, the, the things that are going on right now, even though it seems like it's a crazy place to live and be right now and anywhere in the country, right? But there's a lot of great things going on in this town, and, and it's exciting that people want to invest in, the, in this town and our community, our communities that we operate our businesses in. And it's, it's, it's exciting to see people starting up businesses and, and also just joining the chamber, even if they've been a business member for a while wanting to become part of the chamber because they know what the benefits are. So I'm excited that we've got a lot of new members in the last couple of months. I'm going to start with just reviewing August real quick. Uh, we started off uh, with uh, Discover Paragliding, uh, somebody who had been with us before and came back, and that's Brad Hill. Um, and, and again, he, he knows and understands how the the chamber can benefit his business. So then we have a Cambrium Gallery with uh, Krista Trask. Uh, we've got Astoria Marina Seafoods is a new startup. That's with uh, Amanda Cordero and uh, and Roy Brewer. Then we have Robert Blue, who's an individual member. Um, Bornstein Seafood, Andrew Bornstein. And uh, Andrew's going to be back down in this area uh, living here again. Carrie Hartnett, uh, PC. And uh, then we have Fish People's Seafood Market that's uh, over in El Waco. And they just opened up and they're uh, a great little seafood market um, offering fresh fish to the local area. Um, and then that's uh, that was just for August. So for uh, uh, September already, we've got uh, Crestcom Wi-Fi is starting up and they'll be serving uh, the areas over in Napa and out that way. Uh, Lower Columbia Q Center with uh, Jim Summers. Uh, and then we have Slurpalicious is your speaker this morning or this evening um, is Candy. And then A-Town Coffee with Heather Jensen. Uh, La Petite Astoria Spa just joined as a member. And Domino's Astoria, Pat Farmer, who owns the uh, the same one, uh, Domino's over in Warrington. So, uh, what's that? Six so far this month and eight last month. Uh, we're off to a great start for the, these months and, and uh, just excited that we're going to have more and more to go and join with us. Um, and we look forward to if you have anybody that that, you know, would like to be a chamber member, of course, please send them my way. We'd love to talk to them and, and share with them all the benefits. And that's what I've got for you today. Great. Well, thank you, Jerry. Really appreciate that thorough update. And yeah, just definitely a testament to your hard work uh, that we've got so many new members and a testament to just uh, the value of a cheaper. Uh, I think a lot of businesses are trying to make sure they're um, on good, good, stable ground right now and, and make those connections that are so important in our small business community. So um, without further ado, um, we are pleased to welcome Candy Yu tonight with Slurpalicious. And Candy is originally from Hong Kong. She came to Portland, Oregon for her PhD in computer science. So I will say uh, when uh, we were going through Remo and making sure we knew the system to be, get ready for her presentation tonight, uh, she picked it up in no time. So uh, she got her PhD at Portland State University. Recently, she realized she loves to start and run sustainable, passionate businesses that are committed to fair practices. She loves to travel, take pictures and climb. She recently opened Near the Pier, which is a boutique hotel in Astoria that features family rooms and antique decor that matches the era of the building. Uh, she's also one of the owners of Malka, a Portland restaurant she invested in after saving money for five years. And she just loved the food in, in that food cart and wanted to help the chef uh, become a restaurant owner. So get kind of a brick and mortar location. So she's the mother of two little ones and a co-owner of Slurpalicious which is a brand new eatery app developed by eatery owners. Um, so Slurpalicious allows users to take out, uh, to order takeout from their favorite local restaurants. 
Uh, they can pay it forward by providing a free meal to another app user. Uh, so providing food for other folks in the community who might need a, a, a pick me up, a, a good meal from a good restaurant. And then coming soon, they're going to have uh, food delivery. Uh, so you can order online and get food delivered to your door. So without further ado, Candy with Slurp Delicious. Uh, Candy, if you can turn your cam on and mic on. Hello, welcome. And thank you so much for the introduction, Kelsey. Um, can you guys see my slide? Uh, let me see here. Okay, I have to click share. Is it working? Okay, I'll try again. Looks like I can share it from my end if that's easier for you, Candy. Uh, I think I got it. Got it? Okay. There we go. Perfect. Now okay, we perfect. can see them. All right. Perfect. So hi, everyone. So um, my name is Candy. Uh, today I'm representing Slurfalicious. Um, and uh, basically I'm co-owner, well, it kind of actually my husband. <laughs> so uh, his name is Akshay Dua. Oh, I should put his name on it. <laughs> Don't tell him. I didn't put it. <laughs> so let's uh, start with uh, what is Slurfalicious? So basically um, it's an app that is uh, for eatery, that is built by eatery owner. Uh, we just made that uh, sandwich board by hand uh, last weekend because we realized that we need a little bit more marketing and um, uh, more exposure of our app. So it will be placed in uh, some of the food cart area that started Slurfalicious. Okay, so let's start off telling you guys how, how Slurfalicious is being born. So basically, um, we are one of the owner um, of a restaurant in, in Portland called Malka. So we opened uh, back in uh, mid-January this year. And of course, uh, as you can imagine, uh, we just opened um, and not not too long then COVID hit. And we are hit by COVID just like any other eateries. Um, but lucky enough that we actually have a very good support system uh, by the community. So they really love us and they they help us a lot to survive. So they buy a lot of gift card and they want us to sustain. So we are actually doing OK. But at the same time, we got a lot of requests by a lot of clients saying that, you know, they miss our food. Um, they can't really come out to buy food. So they ask, they request us to have delivery. So then we start researching delivery companies like Caviar, DoorDash, uh, GrabHub, Postmate. Um, but then we were really, really shocked by the fees that they are uh, putting on. So uh, most of them, they are putting like 30% to 65% uh, fees. And Caviar come to approach us saying that, okay, we will give you 22% if you are exclusive with us. Um, so we think for a very long time um, because our food is... It's really um, a high, very low uh, margin. And um, in order to provide food um, for 30% cut, it's literally impossible for us to make any money. In fact, we will make a loss. But then at the end, we decide to do it just because we know how much the community need delivery, especially for winter. Um, Every dish that we sell, we, 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 we don't make money. We, we take a loss. But we think that um, we, we need to do that because uh, to support the community. And two months back, um, what happened is that two months back, I just realized that, well, my husband and I, we are actually engineer. It didn't occur to us that, you know, maybe we thought that we can do it ourselves. And if we can do it ourselves, we can benefit the entire eatery. So we started uh, Slurpalicious. Well, before the name is called Cut Bites. If um, uh, some of you guys might have um, read the story uh, about Cut Bites and we want to be inclusive, more inclusive to other eateries instead of food cart, we change our name to Slurpalicious now. So our goal is to provide three things. First, online order contactless pickup. Second, pay it forward. And last, we want to be able to deliver um, uh, for the for 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 Astoria and Ron area. Um, so let me talk about each of them. So 
order online, contactless pickup. So what is it and what is the benefit? So for customer, so you can basically download Slurpolicious. You can pick your eatery and you can look at the menu and then you can pick the food that you like. You place the order and once you place the order, your eatery will receive the order notification. They can accept your order. So one is accepted means that your food is cooking. Then you just have to wait for the notification um, say your food is ready then you can go to pick it up so basically you don't have to wait outside of the food cart or outside of the restaurant which right now is really important to us by doing so by placing online order you actually help the community to reduce COVID spread because you don't not only you don't have to touch the screen uh, but also at the same time you help the eatery a lot. They don't have to switch back and forth to taking order and cooking. And at the same time, you know, uh, many eatery in Portland, they actually have to close down because they're not confident that, you know, they can open safely uh, during COVID time. So by doing online order, you actually help the eatery um, to open safely to still serve the community. So on the right hand side uh, on the screen, I show some of the screen latest screenshot. That is what this look like in the menu. So you have um, the restaurant, names on the top and then you will see some food there will be menu in the bottom you can place um, your order and then there will be a roadmap uh, once your order is placed to tell you that your order is placed accepted or ready you know uh, for you to pick it up so this is the online order contentless pickup so imagine if the entire Astoria area everybody is doing online order contentless pickup then no one will be able to um, uh, uh, no one will need to actually uh, touch any uh, touch screen uh, to place the order. And at the same time, all the eatery, you know, can remain open and remain safe. On the eatery size, you know, what do they, what, what, what is it for them? What is online order contentless pickup? I think for a lot of eatery, you may not familiar, you know, what is online order uh, and contentless pickup look like? So, um, not only it can save you time and labor um, so that you don't have to switch back and forth to take order and cooking, but also you can open safely. Uh, on the right hand side, there's a screenshot that is what this look like. So when the new order come in, so it will be in the new order tab. So you have the new order. Um, George is uh, placing an order and then you have the food. So you can prepare food and then you can click the button, accept order. And once you accept it, it will go to the accept order tab. And then when you when the uh, you, when the food is ready, after you 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 prepare um, the food, you can just click a button saying that you know the um, the the food is ready. Then the then the order will basically uh, move to the uh, ready order tab. So it is pretty simple to use. There may be a learning curve if you used to just um, uh, place the order uh, by hand, but uh, the learning curve definitely will save you uh, time and money in the long run. Uh, at Malka, we have two to three front of house. Um, uh, it's pretty expensive uh, to pick up phone call and place order, and this will definitely be helpful. So in terms of fees, what Slurpolicious charge for online order content, uh, contentless pickup? So there is a one-time set of fees that will cover our infrastructure. Basically, it's the database uh, that we provide and the text messaging that they're charging us. But we are waiving that one-time set of fees for Astoria and Warren eateries. The reason that we do that is that we want, um, we understand that we are rolling out this uh, uh, pilot program. Uh, there will be a lot of improvement that is uh, need to be, you know, uh, in place back and forth so we understand the the uh, this benefit to us as well so we want to wait waive this one time set of fees and after this there is no monthly cost and there's no subscription fees so literally for Astoria and Warren area if you sign up for online order that is is completely free to you um, the only thing it will be that when the um, and customer, they use their credit card. There will be a credit card fees that is charged by Stripe account. Uh, it will be same uh, charge as if you use Square. Um, the transaction is completely transparent. Uh, and when the money come in, it will be direct back to your account once you set up with us. So from our side, you're completely free. If you use Square, it will be exactly the same as you know when you use Slurpolicious. Other companies, uh, DoorDash or GrabHub or Postmate, they might say that it's free right now, but in the long run, uh, all of them charge around 15% um, for online order and pickup service. 
Then the second uh, part of Slavolicious uh, that we want to do is paid forward program. So this idea is actually come from Malka. So when we first open up, COVID hit us and um, uh, people start doing takeout order. Um, we only open for takeout. So then there are some customer, they were saying that, you know, well, you know, I just want to donate some money to buy someone else food that they cannot afford. So and we were like, wow, that's very nice of you. So we start taking money from those donations and then we prepare food for people who in need. And we keep having this pay forward program rolling every day and we keep having donation every day. So every day we'd be able to provide six to 10 meals. And yesterday we just have 15 meals to offer for everyone who in need. They just call us, they said they need food and it's free to them uh, until the 15 meals uh, sold out. So we thought, wow, this is such a nice idea and it's such a nice program. We thought that um, every eatery can benefit from it. And if we integrate in Slavolicious, uh, that will be even better. So what we try to do, we try to expand this pay for program to Slavolicious. Each eatery will have a fund account. And if you feel generous, you can donate to direct to your favorite eatery and the fund will show it in their eatery. So that so in this eatery, there is $95.40. So if you and if you need a food today, you lost a job or something, you can go to Slapolicious and then you can order food, you know, when you see a fund available for the eatery and it's completely free to you. So we also have a central donation pool that we have donation right now. We are also running a campaign to collect more funds and we will distribute those funds to uh, all the eatery that is joined us for online program right now. By default right now, we will distribute at least $100 per eatery until our fund runs out. Um, and if you want to donate to our gift butter campaign, this is the link that you can, you're welcome uh, to donate uh, uh, money to people who need food. 100% um, of the donation will go to uh, people who buy, 100% uh, of the donation will go to the food to buy meal for people. We don't take any commission. We don't um, pay our salary or anything. 100% will definitely go to uh, the meal. We want this to be community service and we want this um, to com completely benefit uh, people who need food. So uh, this is the program that I'm very excited about and has been running at Malka uh, really well. And I hope that this can expand to everyone. And right now, actually, the pay forward program, well, the interface, we're still updating uh, in the next release, but it's just working, actually, honestly. You can spread the word. So right now, we have uh, Coffee or Waffle. Coffee or Waffle actually has fun in their account, and you can actually go online and spread the word. If people need food, they can actually order from them for free waffle. And um, what else benefit from paid forward? Well, it is very, it is, it is even better that uh, it runs in, uh, one in online. One of the reasons is because people who get free food, sometimes they don't want to identify who need uh, free food. Uh, they might just have a bad week. Um, so all the order from Slapolicious for free food will come in a normal order for eatery. So eatery doesn't actually know that, you know, you're ordering free food from them. So if from their side, it's completely transparent. And for eatery, there's no special handling for free food because it will just be regular order. So as an eatery, as a restaurant owner, I understand how difficult in a, in a, in a restaurant business and how busy and how chaos in a kitchen. So most of the time, even though we would like to, uh, like, let's say government program has food stamp, you know, they want to give money to restaurant to provide free food, you know, and they pay the money. But most restaurants, they actually don't want to process special, you know, service like, uh, you know, um, kill porn or something but this way is completely transparent um for 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 the eatery because all the food order will come as a regular order if you already you know have the online order set up with us so last uh, features that we are looking forward to roll out is delivery. So this is just a few snapshots that I um, uh, uh, put it up um, uh, quickly so that, you know, if people, uh, they're not familiar what is going on right now in Portland is that there is a lot of um, a uh, fight going on between delivery company versus uh, Portland eatery. So what happened is that, you know, Portland has put a 10% cap um, for delivery, but then there's a lot of eateries still violating their rules. And then um, some of the uh, eatery 
uh, some of the delivery company, they actually even transfer those fees to end customer. They actually call it Portland mandates fees um, and make the customer feel like the city is charging them, but actually it's not. Uh, they just want to get more money since they cannot get money from the uh, restaurant. Uh, and um, they are charging a really high fees and for those that they are keeping it 10% and the po the law is actually end um, with COVID time end. So that is a, not a really a long-term solutions. So um, what we're looking at is that, you know, they're charging 30 to 65% uh, to the eatery. And as an end customer, they pay to uh, between five to $10 a delivery charge. And then driver on average uh, get paid $4 per delivery. So um, what happened is that uh, we want to understand more about, you know, what happened in delivery because we're doing that. We're planning to do it that. So my husband actually signed up uh, for DoorDash um, uh, for two hours to see what happened. So he uh, signed up for DoorDash as a driver. Uh, he got two orders in two hours. Uh, at the end, he got paid $8 from DoorDash, which means that it's $4 per hour, uh, which is a way lower than minimum wage. Uh, in one case, the customer ordered $12 worth of food and paid $7.99 for the deliveries and still kind enough to pay $3 for the tips. So in totals, the customer paid $22.99 for $12 worth of food, which is 91.6% delivery fees, which is unreasonable in my view. And the delivery company actually uh, on the top of that still get 30% of the fees from the restaurant and the driver didn't get paid much and all the money go to the delivery company and they still declare that they'd make a loss uh, uh, during the year. And you would say, why, where all the money goes? Well, I'm, an engineer, so I know how much engineering costs uh, in salary. So in the uh, Silicon Valley, um, engineering costs um, between one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to um, some. In, on average, is one hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand, and in some cases, is even even more. You can imagine for a small company, they might have fifty people, so it's already like you know fifteen million uh, uh, dollar per year. So you can scale. That is only for the salary. On the top of that, they will have to have rent buildings. And not only that, so most of the delivery company, they when they start, they will get VC funded. So VC will pay, give you like $10 million or even in some cases, like a billion dollars. And they will want their money back. So that's why they have to charge 30% or even more in some cases to cover all those costs and cover all the VC funding. Um, in our from our side, we try really hard not to get VC funded because we really want this to work. We really want this to be affordable to everybody. So for Slapolicious, what is our goal? Our goal is to be able to afford affordable uh, delivery solution for eatery. So our target goal is um, uh, to target between five to 10% for eatery so that we can run our infrastructure, pay our um, staff and run uh, and basically run a sustainable business. Um, and we also want to pay the driver more so that we can have a fair pay and also lower cost for end customer. So um, you would ask, why we can do that. So one of the reasons is that our team, uh, we have a very, very small team. We only have uh, seven people right now. And um, besides my husband, everybody else is actually in India. So their pay is much, much lower than um, US salary. And at the same time, you know, um, I would say we don't want to be greedy people. And I think to run uh, Sula Policious is, um, is very affordable. And we also try to run it smartly and more efficiently. So we have some algorithm that we have in mind so that we can basically uh, do delivery more efficient in a way that it can benefit both ETV driver and end customer. So right now we are um, trying to get more ETV to sign up so that you know uh, we can actually uh, roll out the delivery features. So we are doing um, a promotion. So if you sign up the online uh, order, contact us pick up by September 15, you will actually get um, a huge discount uh, for delivery uh, service uh, for one year. Uh, that is trying to just trying to get everybody together. So what else you can do uh, in Slapolicious? So, well, you can take pictures 
uh, share with your friends and your neighbors, even tourists, when they come to Astoria, what good food to eat about, you know, the, the good found that you have eaten today. Um, so any eateries can be put it on the map in uh, Slapolicious. This will help to complete the entire eatery map and database. And we want so Slapolicious to be powered by the community. Um, also, if you see something you like on Slapolicious, you can click try and then it will automatically go to your try list. And one day if you go out, you don't know what to eat, you know, you can just pull up your try list to say, hey, you know, oh, that day I saw that really delicious. You know, let me try it today. Uh, you can also share your um, bean list, which is uh, everywhere that you been to and or your favorite place with your friends or even tourists they come to town all the time and ask me hey you know where's good food to eat you know I can just share the list with them so all of this can be done in Slapolicious so um, also um, so at this point we have our online order um, uh, already uh, uh, available uh, on Slapolicious our pay for what is also available uh, on Slapolicious and all these are free uh, for the community to use and we wanted you know everybody to enjoy it uh, but in order to have the delivery service uh, to roll out um, how to make it happen uh, as I said that you know we are actually uh, really small uh, we don't have million dollar funds in our account. So in order to achieve that, we really need all the iterate to sign up together to do it. Otherwise, we won't be able to, you know, sustain out even to try it out. So we will need at least, you know, 35 iterates to sign up. And we hope that we, we can have that before the winter. Um, right now we have a coffee or waffle. Uh, and then this weekend, we should be able to sign up a uh, surf uh, to sew and road and bow also. So hopefully the entire food pot eventually, you know, have one food pot in Astoria uh, to be able to on Slapolicious and eventually, hopefully every eateries can be on Slapolicious in Astoria and Warren area. If you if you are a resident um, in Astoria and Warren area, tell your favorite eateries to join us. Um, not only that I can help with COVID, help with residents, but also, you know, it will help them as well. Um, your word really mean a lot to them. Um, you just say one line is better than me talk to them for an hour because all eatery, you know, they love their customer, just like how Malka, we love our customer. Um, if you are eatery, join us as soon as possible. Uh, don't wait to see how others eateries is doing. We promise, you know, we we will stick around and we promise we we'll try our best, you know, to listen to you and what features you want. I promise you, um, like, well, big company, they don't even want to go to small town. But if they were come, they won't even listen to, you know, uh, small features, you know, but we will, we try very hard right now. We work with Coffee or Waffle. He give us a lot of good feedbacks. We constantly uh, roll out features and updates to the app, getting it better and better and more convenient to you. It's completely free right now to sign up. We can even help you to set it up, help you to set up your manual. If you don't have good pictures, you can take you know, your food pictures for you. Um, we'll do whatever we can to get you on Slapolicious. Um, we need to join our force right now um, in order to roll out delivery before winter. Uh, and everyone else, um, what you can do, download Slapolicious, definitely. Uh, take a picture, share with other people, donate to pay it forward if you have um, extra money. Uh, get a free food if you need one and spread the word. So uh, this is our, my last slides. Um, what we have uh, for future community plan. So let's say everybody get together and then we do really well and you know we have become really successful. So we have a lot of fun things in mind that you know we really want to uh, contribute back to the community. Uh, we want to be able to provide funds for food trucks. I love food trucks. You know when food trucks um, part. Uh, uh, has to tear down and build like, you know, big residential building, my heart broke, you know. Um, so I want to be able to, you know, provide funds for uh, food trucks to have cover area for winters, put decoration, put lights, put fire pit, you know, to make it like a fun, nice um, uh, experience for everyone and tourists. Um, I also want to be able to help passionate food truck chef to go to brick and mortar restaurants, just like how we do um, for Malka. 
and we really enjoy the process and we love uh, the food at Malka and the community. We want to be able to do photo contacts so that to help you know young journalists uh, to write about food, to take pictures. We want to do community food you know festival and you know vote for best food of the week uh, and then we can have like you know small award for eateries you know to do small projects. So um, this is all the fun things that we have in mind if we become successful and we really need your help and thank you. Well, Candy, thank you. I can hear your energy and your excitement for this uh, project. I've been taking notes uh, fast and furious, so I have a couple questions for you. Um, yes. First off, how did you come up with the app name? Where did Slurp <laughs> come from? You mean Slurpalicious. Okay, this is a fun one. Um, if you are parents, you must uh, heard of Dr. Sue. Yeah, Dr. Seuss, yep. Well, Dr. Sue has a lot of like rumble, rumbling word. I have a little one. He just turned five. He likes to, you know, watch cat in the head um, and like, you know, he will make up different word, different sounds. Uh, and one day we were saying that, well, cat bites only for food truck. We will need a new name. So what should we do? And my husband says, slurp, slurp, it's tasty. And my kid suddenly says, slurp, delicious. I was like, Okay, that sounds fun. And here we go, it's Lepolicious. That's great, what a fun story. Uh, kids can be such inspiration when we don't know that we need it. <laughs> um, so I really liked the point that you made about saving time and money with uh, not having to have um, as uh, robust of a staffing schedule. So you think about answering phones, um, you've got to have a person there answering each order call that comes in. And if somebody else is trying to call at the same time, they get your voicemail and then you have to call them back. Um, so it's really kind of a passive ordering system in that you don't have to be as a restaurateur um, directly answering those calls. They just come in and kind of line up in a queue. And so you can start making that food um, when you have a minute to, to peek at the app. So it really could be, um, especially in a, in a time when people are trying to uh, cut their costs and make sure their business is on stable financial footing and all of the craziness that's going on in the world, it could be a, a huge cost savings as well. Yes. Um, right now, like um, our labor costs uh, at Malka is at like almost 50%, um, which is uh, really high as a business. And um, but in order to be able to like get all the phone calls and we don't miss them, uh, we need all of them. Uh, and 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 I understand even for small, iter especially for small eatery like a food truck, you only have one person. You cannot afford to hire another person. Uh, coffee or waffle sign up with us. And one of the experience he shared with us is that he will wear gloves to cook the waffle and then take off gloves to pick up the phone. And it's really difficult for him. And he really, really want eventually everything roll to online order. And that can help him uh, to save time to do that. Yeah, and we've, uh, we've definitely had people in the area hoping that we would have um, some sort of online ordering or app, you know, the grub hubs of the world um, come to this area. Um, but like you said, they're not really wanting to be involved in a really small community. So something like this that starts from the ground up um, could be a better fit for our area. Um, in the pay it forward section, um, I was really struck by the aspect that you're helping two people or two entities. You're helping the business by giving them your money and your support. And then you're helping the customer who uh, utilizes the free meal and gets to eat that food. So you're basically using your money to uh, positively impact your community in multiple different ways. Yes, um, that is exactly how I envision it and how I want it. And that's how Mauka being run right now. And we just think that um, it is so amazing. And and you would be surprised how many people, they are really generous. And even a dollar, like if you go to our campaign, even to only $1, I would be really, really appreciate because 
we add up like 10,000 people donate a dollar, there's $10,000, you know? And um, we were really, really surprised that at Malka, every day we have enough donation to have like six to 10 meals. I mean, that is like not a big number given that we actually don't have advertisement for pay it forward for Malka. Like we don't, we just call it pay it forward because it's a fun name to say, but people just call in, order their food and say, can I pay you some money? You know, and we say, yeah, sure. You know, we can do that. And it's very private. The person who, you know, like you said, maybe lost their job is down on their luck and and needs a pick me up, needs some good warm food in their belly to to make their day better. They don't have to feel like there's a stigma associated with it. Like yes. the restaurant is going to judge them. Yeah, totally. So um, I have been like my I grew up in a really poor family. Um, I came to the US with $200 in my pocket. Wow. I have been um, when I was students, I'm very grateful that I can actually uh, that's another story some other time. Uh, but I'm very grateful to be in the US. Uh, but when I first start out, I will buy the cheapest roll of bread and have ham like big a pack of ham and I'll have sly ham with sly bread every day, you know, um, throughout the month, you know, and I understand when uh, on Friday, there's an organization called Focus and they will give us free soup and bagel. And that is the best meal for me of the week. And I understand um, I don't have to fill out any paperwork. I don't have to prove that I'm really poor, you know, and someone just being nice and give you a free meal. And I really appreciate that. And I felt I feel like um, everyone should deserve that, especially in COVID time. You know, so many people lost their job and mm -hmm. they don't get, you know, the government money and no one really, really, really want to go on the food stand because they don't feel like they actually really need it. You know what I mean? But something nice, something just special once for a while, I think is, is, is nice. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, so your app uh, has, uh, like you said, uh, coffee or waffle and then a couple other food carts that are signing on. Um, but you're running the app already successfully in Portland. You're just expanding it to Astoria. You're running it through Malka. No, uh, okay. let me let me correct it. Um, we are not starting in Portland just because Portland is a very big city. Okay. Um, we we initially we want to start out in Portland um, and one of the reasons that we don't want to do that is that um, we thought that we should start small mm -hmm. and be able to like you know um, improve the app and then you know to build a co stronger community. Uh, Portland is a much bigger city and the community is kind of diverse and then there's a lot of things going on uh, between restaurants. Um, so we want to be rolled out in Portland but that will be our second step once uh, a story is, is, is successfully run and then we totally want to you know uh, roll out to Portland and then eventually we want to roll out to um, many many cities and to benefit uh, any you know, um, that they need it. That's awesome. That's great. Um, you talked about it with, with Malka about how um, you helped uh, your, your friends whose food you loved um, end up in a brick and mortar store. Um, and that's kind of one of the fun things about food trucks is sometimes they're a starter business for, you know, future expansion. And it's a, it's a way for a business owner to explore uh, their food choices, their menu offerings without having all of the overhead of a brick and mortar store. And then once they're successful on that smaller scale, they can actually um, expand and, and get even more of a presence in a community as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, that is that that is one of the things that, you know, um, we, we we are really glad we can do. Um, when we eat her food in a food cart, you know, we just, we were students, you know, we don't have any money and, and we're still saving money, you know, to fix up our house. And, and, but first bite of her food, I was just shocked. I was like, she served her food in an airstream uh, with tablecloth and flowers. And the, when the food come out is in a hand painted bowl, which means that she wash it in the food cart without dishwasher for every single customer. And I was like, and she, she sell that bowl. The bowl has like more than 
25 ingredients with different colors and texture. And I can tell how much hard work she has to put in to prepare that. She closed the food cart for four days and opened only three days because she needed to prep the food. And I was like, she sold for $10. And literally, I know she's not making any money. And I was like, someone so hardworking, someone so passionate about food really deserve to own a restaurant. And, and that's why from that point on, I told my husband, can we start saving up money? If one day we have money, I want to invest in her. And that happened. <laughs> that's so exciting. So um, what can uh, eatery owners do to reach out to you? And what's kind of the process that they um, would get started if um, they were interested in learning more about this? Right. So we are still improving our website, but most of the information, I try very hard to put it a Q&A section on our website, slapalicious.com. Uh, we still have to organize the page, but information is there. Um, we'll get better. Uh, so I would say definitely, if you have any question, reach out to me. Um, I go to a story every week and uh, I'm more than happy to set up a time with you guys and talk to, to talk about it if you have any question if you have any doubt if this is really really free you know we would will I charge you in the future I'm really really um, willing to able to talk to you in person and convince you that it is free uh, and I'm not going to charge you in the future <laughs> um, and then uh, I we we try right now to set up like a self setup service. Uh, if you don't want to like kind of like you know you're too busy, we would uh, set up a, uh, uh, instructions online, but it's not available now. But it will be there. But if you need help, we are uh, happy to. Um, you can email me. Uh, is the email contact is on celebolicious.com. Um, you, uh, you're welcome to email me and then we are more than happy, you know, to set up. It only need 15 to 30 minutes of your time and then it will completely set up and then we can even put your menu up, you know, and everybody will be able to see it. And you can, even though when you start out, you can disable the features if you're not feel comfortable with it, you know. Um, so there is an option. It's not like once you're on, you're on, we force you to, you know, <laughs> or the online. No, there's a ramming time. You know, we understand, you know, eatery is, you know, sometimes it's tough. Well, great. That's a lot of wonderful information as a user who wants to someday order delivery and get it delivered to my house. And it's not just um, pizza. That's one of the only delivery options available. I'd love to see every restaurant in town. Um, be able to offer delivery and just get it sent to my door on a day that I don't want to leave my house. So I'm excited for this and uh, excited to see where this goes and really appreciate you sharing with us, Candy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kelsey. That's Thank great. you, everyone. Candy, I got a, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, I, I too am excited about the idea, even before we get to delivery, the idea that I can sit at my desk in my office and decide what I want for lunch, order it, and then it'll tell me when it's ready. So I'm not even, especially in the winter time, I'm not standing out in the rain, you know, kind of wandering around, hoping hoping my 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 name's going to be called soon. I don't even get out of my car until it says it's ready. Um, but also that I can I can check menus, that I can I can do all the things that this thing is going to do. Um, Vanessa asked a question, and you answered it in the in the conversation. But it was about when you go on the app and you hit the search button. I find we find all kinds of restaurants here locally and we see pictures of their food and maybe an example of what they're what they're they're serving. Um, but that's the that's the, the the share feature, right? That's what you were talking about where people take yes. a picture of their, their thing that they liked and they and they tag a restaurant and 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 that's that's basically um, crowd sourced information right right yeah so basically you know if if you like you know right now of course you know most of the places is posted by me or my husband you know right. in the story yeah um basically but more and more people like you know if you found new dishes or new food or even like busu you know have a new like you know invention in their dish right you know you can post it then someone search and then they can basically you know see a new post you know uh in the search area um and if but those uh, right now, those uh, eatery may not be on the online um, uh, features available, uh, but you will still be able to find them. You will still be able to search them. Um, and if they're good, uh, so there is uh, one section that I really like, the top section called must try dish. So um, that is all the dishes that if someone say that, you know, oh, this is amazing dish, you must try in this restaurant. So we call it a bombshell dish. 
And eventually, you know, I'm telling my husband right now, like, you know, what I'm envisioning the app will be uh, the bombshell dish will have like the fire coming up, you know, from the screen. <laughs> and then when you say bombshell, and it could be like fire going up. And then, you know, it's just like you really, really have to try, you know, in, in a story, the fish is so fresh, the crab is amazing, right? You know, so those will be in the bombshell dish section. So if you're eatery, the good part is that, you know, um, we don't rate you. We don't rate you like Yaps or Google. We don't want her to have a rating system because uh, sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's very negative impact to businesses. We don't want that. We understand that part. So instead, we encourage our customer to appreciate what dish they like the most. So when they love those dish, they will say bombshell. And then, you know, you can keep inventing new dishes that have more bombshell, more bombshell, you know, on Salapolicious. And there will be no negative impact to your business. All right. So if we get to the point, when we get to the point where there's a lot of eateries on here where, um, you know, so we, your hotel could share this with visitors before they come. Hey, download this app and you can find, you can, you can shop for food um, when you get here rather than, 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 you know, going through a, a list of menus or um, there's, there's, there's advantages for people who are just visiting the town for a while to be able to sort of sort through what's available and what's what's recommended. That is actually how I started Ambition because I love to travel when I um, well, was young. I backpack in many places, you know, in Europe, in China, in rural area. But sometimes when you go there, you were like, what should I eat there? What is the most special? dish, you know, in the region. So that's how the idea come along, you know, um, that when tra when tourists, when they come into a new place, you know, they can basically search and then they know about like, you know, local people. Sometimes there are some like, you know, you know, there's some um, how, how to say it, like, you know, cultural, you know, uh, uh, dishes that they should eat. But sometimes there's like local, you know, popular. Time. Right now, the best is the you know, that popsicle from that, you know, crazy spice chili coconut flavor, you know, in some shop, you know. So sometimes local love to hear about what residents love the local about, you know, in those times, you know, I want to be able to do that, you know. Perfect. Candy, thank you. I want people to have a chance to network a little bit this evening. Um, will you join us at, at one of the tables and, and uh, people can come and ask you personal questions directly? Is that okay? Oh yeah, totally. I'm more than happy to answer any question. Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off. If you will sign off, we'll all go back to table view. Don't forget, folks, that you can click, uh, double click a table, and go and talk to somebody. Don't be stuck at a table all by yourself. That's just sad. I'll see you in a minute, Candy. Thank you.